the last presentation, which was put together by the team, team at your set, and I'd like you all to stand up, please. Certain ecosystem services, particularly also at the urban level. 
the importance for health was highlighted. It was also highlighted that work is needed in that area. I'd like to draw your attention to uh, one last time at the bottom of the stairs. There is a poster relating ecosystem services and health that was prepared by an initiative in Belgium um, where they had a conference, policy makers from health and biodiversity meeting. And they told us afterwards at the workshop it was really a great idea to bring this together and we try to focus on you know where are the focal points and where can we start working. They said, well, that was a great idea, but it's slightly too early. We haven't quite understood it yet. But I think that's definitely one area where we can extend our our reach and where a lot a lot um, can be done, but also a lot can be achieved because it is really a, where very high values are at stake. It's also clear that involvement of different stakeholders from the outset is key. And that was the finding that whenever you do that, stakeholders identify much more ecosystem services and quite different ecosystem services from the ones that researchers assume. So that's one clear indication why it makes a lot of sense. Now, I think the main challenge here is how to organize the exchange because we can hold the workshop on film covering all the local initiatives. So one option, of course, from our point of view are the team cases. So I'd also like to draw your attention to, again, because the blue ones are team cases, but there's definitely still a lot of ones missing and a lot of areas not populated by such cases, but there might also be other options and we'd be very interested in hearing your proposals. Networks and databases. So I think it's been demonstrated very clearly that the modeling and ecosystem services are advancing quickly. I think in this conference we haven't really even reached out into the core modeling uh, community, but there, there is a lot ongoing there, also the modeling of trade-offs, which a couple of years ago was still quite an issue and hardly any work done. There are tools for science policy dialogue. There was an agreement to work now with what, you, what we have and refine methodology as, well, as we move on. There was a very interesting discussion on is the margin of error of 92%, is that high or low? So some of the younger members of our team said, well, you know, can, can you move on with a margin of error so that's this high? Well, I'd, I'd argue at least you've got the order of magnitude right and how many projects are being planned in the real world with real money put on the table right, when they don't even have the order of magnitude right at the outset. There was, especially today, a lot of discussion on is, wouldn't it be valuable to have a unified database? <coughs> then some issues involved in that, like ensuring quality, the suitability of certain um, values for benefit transfer, for example, how do you get the user perspective in there? So should this be organized more as a repository for people who understand to use? Or can you create a user interface where other users can access it? Can it be organized in a way that you can approach it with a policy perspective in mind? And then, of course, it's issues like updating. I think there's finally agreement that the team database, which was built up mainly by Dr. Ward and his team, will be hosted and further developed and expanded and integrated by the Ecosystem Service Partnership. Correct me if I got that wrong. And we're very much uh, looking forward to finally making this available because a lot of people have been asking about this and have been wanting to, to access it. On biomes, this is much more tricky, so just a couple of, of points. Dependency, so who depends on certain resources, on certain uh, biomes, forests, wetlands, etc., as a good option of, for demonstrating value, particularly in developing countries. We see an increasing trend of integrating teeth into the development agenda by several sessions dedicated to that, and training material that GIZ, for example, is, has prepared and is extending. The forest and wetlands all had a pretty good cover of, of the multifunctionality of these biomes, so we see much less studies looking only into carbon or only into one um, service. But what came across clearly in these